Hello everyone! Today's video is going to be about smells in the tiny house. With working with such a small space, you're going to have a lot of smells accumulating in your tiny house. So I just want to go through my tiny house and explain exactly where the smells go, what the smells are, and what you can do about them. I'm going to be making a Boca burger. Um, I usually make it in this pan or a smaller pan on the cooktop burner and then I turn on this um, range uh, vent thing for venting out the smoke and the odors. So I'm going to cook this up and I want to show you guys um, how much smoke accumulates from it and where it all goes. After I make these things, um, my house does not usually smell like a Boca Burger because of this vent. Um, but if you don't have a vent and you only have windows um, and open them, I can imagine your house smelling like the food unless you can ventilate it um, well. But I'm in Illinois, so in the winter I'm not going to be opening all my windows to ventilate. I would rather use um, a, a range hood. So. Let's get started on cooking a Boca Burger. All right, so I have the pan started and I'm going to put a Boca Burger into the pan. Um, it's been heating up for a while now, so it's gonna, woo! So, because I have my air on and I don't have any of the windows open, I'm going to be cooking this bad boy um, just with this vent because I don't want my air going out the window, so let's see what happens. You have to cook it for about 8 to 10 minutes, um, so I want you guys to hopefully see the smoke accumulate. Actually, you can't really see the smoke accumulate because it's already going up the fan. But if I turn off the fan, you do see some of the smoke accumulating over here, and that's the smoke that gets throughout the house. So I just turned that back on again because I had turned it off and my smoke alarm is actually right above the kitchen in my bedroom so it's only a good 10 feet away right now so good thing I turned that back on because I don't want to have to air out the whole house just to turn the, the fire alarm off and that has not happened yet so let's hope it doesn't happen because this bad boy is going to continue to work for me. I always like to get a paper towel ready because um, it's got oil in there so then I put the oil on here, it soaks up the oil, then I'll fold it in half and then uh, place it in there to soak up the rest of the oil. So it seems to be smoking pretty well here. If we didn't have this, it, the scent would and the smoke would disperse throughout the house and your whole house would smell like a Boca Burger or whatever that you're cooking. Make sure if you have um, a cooktop or a oven or a stove or a range that you have either a, a range hood or that you have windows nearby that you can open up um, whenever that you're cooking. Now, after I took that out, what I usually do, it'll continue to cook on there until I've taken it off the burner. So I usually take this and put it over here. Then I'll put this over here and then it, the smoke continues to go up into the range. And sometimes when it's too smoky, I'll put it up here like this. All right, now I'm gonna turn that off because the scent and the smoke has pretty much gone up and out of the house um, as opposed to within my house. So when you're cooking, um, again, you just wanna make sure you either have a vent or make sure you have windows nearby or keep all the windows open so that it can circulate, cross circulate through the house. And there you have it. I have a Boca Burger. The house doesn't smell like Boca Burgers or whatever I, you know, cooked with, not even the smoke. Uh, most of the smoke went up and out of the house and that's all you need to do. Next, we're gonna talk about garbage. 
Um, so the Boca Burger that I just made created um, some mess. So I have some uh, onion that I cut up and I put it in the garbage bag. And um, in 350 square feet, I do not have a garbage can. So um, I keep my garbage on the outside of my door. If I keep that um, onion sitting at the bottom of a new garbage bag for a long time, that smell will accumulate throughout this 350 square feet and you will smell the onion and it stinks. You'll want to make sure that you put onions or anything garlicky or anything that makes the house smell or sits, um, anything that's um, bacteria ridden or rotting or anything like that you want to put on top of the garbage and take it out right away. Um, you don't want to leave anything sit in your garbage can for too long um, or else the smells will go throughout your small space. And there's my garbage. So this garbage is just filled up and I didn't have any room on top of it to put the onions in the bottom of there. So there are onions in the bottom of the um, new bag. Um, what I could do is take the onions out and put them in this bag and just take that bag out. Or what I could do is clean out my house and fill up that bag right away so I can get rid of the smell that will start to accumulate in my house due to the onions in this bag. All right, now we are going to talk about composting toilets uh, and the smell that they create in a tiny house. Uh, a lot of people um, who have these composting toilets swear that there's zero smell that comes with them. Um, I can assure you that is false. Um, for the most part, while you're using it and throughout the day and within the house, there is no smell. But there are times when it does smell. So let me take you through those times and I'll explain exactly when and why and how that happens. Basically, you can't smell anything because of um, this blue uh, pocket door back there um, opens up when you touch or when you sit on this uh, seat. No scent comes through there if it's closed and when this lid is down, it, it, there is also no scent. The only times you will uh, come across some scent with the separate toilet is when you open the toilet and you go to change the bag, yes, it is going to smell bad. Your waste has been sitting in that bag for three weeks. The waste has been starting to compost the compostable bag, which makes the bag thinner. Uh, so if you get that on your, if you accidentally touch a part that has, that's been, you know, composting and sticky and stuff, uh, your hands will smell like that. You need to wash them immediately. Um, because the bag starts to compost, so um, kind of starts to disintegrate while it's in your toilet. It does cause a smell on your hands and it will cause a smell when you're changing it. Um, another time when this causes smell is on the outside of the house, um, and I'll explain why. Let's go take a look. For some reason, I designed my house with the venting of the composting toilet in the front of the area or in front of the house right there. That does have an odor as well um, because it's being vented out of the house. So I recommend putting it up there somewhere, which I am going to eventually vent that up and over the house so that the smell and odor goes up and over the house. Next, we're gonna talk about uh, smells coming from the faucet. If you have a water reclamation system and you are collecting the rain from the rainwater or you have a water reclamation system that uh, filters itself over and over again and you continuously use it, um, the longer you let your water sit in the water heater, um, it will gain like a sulfur type smell. So. If you run your hot water daily, like if you take a shower daily, do your dishes daily, um, do a load of laundry and use your hot water there, uh, the scent in the water will most likely, uh, the egg smell will dissipate. Um, but I do have egg smell. Um, I don't always take a shower every day. Again, another thing to save water. Um, 
I'm pretty clean, but I don't want to take a shower every day. It damages hair, it damages skin and all that. So what I do to run the water um, is I will actually run the hot water for a little bit and you know po possibly leave it running for a good 10 minutes because that's when the uh, hot or that's when the egg smell will dissipate. And now here's where the um, the part gets uh, interesting. After I do that and I leave the house, if I come back into the house, the entire house smells like eggs just from simply running my water. Um, after I take a shower, the entire house smells like eggs. Um, it's pretty gross, so uh, things that you could do, uh, you could add bleach, but I wouldn't recommend it because I just, I wouldn't put bleach on my skin. Uh, people may do their laundry in bleach, but then it gets you know, water doused with it and most of the bleach goes away. But I don't want to put bleach in my water system and then shower in bleach, if that makes sense. Um, so I will, I refuse to put bleach in there. Um, I did put some peroxide in there and I also um, thought about putting like maybe essential oils in there, but I'm not sure about that yet. The other thing I was thinking about to get the egg smell away would be to use the campground water. If I use the campground water, I wouldn't have to recycle it over and over and I could constantly use their water which has chlorine in it. Um, the chlorine cleans the water. Uh, it's just like regular water from like a, a house or an apartment. Um, so I am thinking about doing that just to have fresh water. On the other hand, I don't want the chlorine in my water so I don't know, it's, it's, uh, I'm trying to weigh it, it's up and down. So that is another uh, time when you're running your, your water system where you, your whole house will smell like whatever's coming out of the faucet. And now let's talk about the litter box odors. Um, as you can see, I opened the litter box and yes, there are some presents that were left in there for me but um, I wanted to show you this on purpose because uh, I've had some problems lately with the litter that I've been choosing. Uh, the corn litter that I was choosing, it clumped well, um, but it was a source for bugs, so I had to switch it, and I switched to this uh, paper stuff. Um, and I'm just gonna grab out of here, this is like a paper pellet. When these paper pellets get soaked with urine, um, you have to remove them from the box or the, the urine filled or the urine soaked paper pellets will um, go throughout the house. So just as in corn litter as well as clay litter, um, depending on what kind of litter you get, you're going to want to change it often and make sure that whatever is absorbing the urine, either you get that out of the box or if it's a clumping litter, you want to get that out of the box too. Um, and stuff like uh, that, you'll want to get out of the box as well because if the cats step on that, then they're most likely going to leave poo stamps all over the house. Not fun, especially when you only have a little house and now wherever they leave their poo stamps, whether it's from, <laughs> from their butt, from just going to the bathroom, or from stepping on some of their poop when they're in there, um, they also smell their own scents in the tiny house. So if, if there's litter, if there's urine laden litter in there, they're going to smell it. If there's poo stamps all over the house, they're going to smell it. The, the kind of litter that I like usually is the one where you just fill it up and you don't have to redo the whole thing. Um, I find that clumping litter does work well and I might go back to clay, but so far so good this stuff is working. So we're going to see how it does with smells throughout the rest of the time with me using this. If not, I think I'll be switching to either crystals or silica or even back to clay. But um, as far as smells with the litter box is concerned, if this door is, is, is closed, I can't smell anything. Um, but you do smell it when you when you open it and change the litter. So I just expect that. The entire house though does not smell like poop or urine. 
The only time it did smell like urine was when uh, that corn litter that I had, I hadn't changed it for like, well, I was changing it every day, but w the corn litter was so particulate that when you went to scoop it, some of it fell throughout and you couldn't, you could, it fell through the slats of the, the scooper and you couldn't really put it in the bag. So that stuff would stay in the litter box and it accumulated a bad urine smell at one point. So bye bye corn litter and let's see how some other of these litters do. Another area would be the washer dryer combo. Um, after I did a load of laundry, after I had my mold infested clothes in there, uh, I did a load of laundry. I did two loads, well actually I didn't do any laundry, I kind of did a rinse cycle twice. And when I opened the washer dryer combo, the entire thing smelled like egg water and mold. Um, so that is another source of scent and smell throughout your house. Again, if you have, if you're using the water reclamation system and you use the washer dryer combo and you put that water through there, it is possible that it is going to smell like eggs. If there's also another bacteria in there, such as mold, it's not going to go well together. So I'm going to show you inside my washer dryer combo and what I have to do to get that smell out of there. So here's my washer dryer combo and all I did was open the door after those two incidences and I smelled inside. Actually, it still smells disgusting. I have not used this since the molding incident and I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm either going to replace this, sell this, or I don't know, figure something out, maybe use regular water, or just pay $1.75 at the campground to do my laundry there. But what I found was I will, if I do use it, I open it and I keep it open for maybe three or four days. I also leave that window open and I turn on the fan that's up there behind the toilet paper. What I discovered was underneath here, there's this lip that holds all this water and moisture in there. And it's kind of, it's, it goes underneath here. And there was water all in there. There was water in here. There was water all in here. There was water in here. Yeah, it stinks. It does not smell good in this, this washer dryer combo right now. Um, even after letting it air out for two or three days. Another issue being the towels. I would hang my towels there after uh, getting out of the shower and what, when I put my hair towel up there, it kind of, I don't know, maybe trapped some of the moisture that was under here on the towel. And so this started molding as well. So now, after every shower, I will take this and then hang it above here in order for that to dry. I'll usually have this open and then I will we'll also hang this up there after this is done, um, after the towel is done drying. So just from experiences, um, I have now um, started to hang all of my wet clothes before I wash them. I no longer store my wet clothes in the washer dryer combo, so um, I kind of don't, don't even have to worry about the washer dryer combo anymore. And I think right now, since I do have the convenience of using it in the campground, I might as well do that uh, because that was a whole ordeal. Last but not least, I want to talk about the polyurethane that's on the, the walls when you either number one, pay for it to have it done and you receive your house, or number two, you don't pay for it to have it done and you decide to do it in your house on your own. So I had the walls whitewashed by Incredible Tiny Homes. Um, they did a great job. Uh, they whitewashed it, they polyurethaned it. The only problem that I came across was when it was in their warehouse, I went to go uh, stain the outside. I slept in my house, but since the warehouse wasn't really ventilated and since it was kind of cold, um, I had to keep the windows closed. So while I was sleeping in this area, the polyurethane from the, the walls were, it was terrible. It was so bad. So I actually had to sleep in the bunk room. Um, that said, I left it there for, you know, the three months and then I went to the, the Incredible Tiny Homes Jam 
and I, again, I slept in it for that whole weekend, but this time I was able, it was hotter, so I was able to open the windows and uh, ventilate the house a little bit. I was able to sleep comfortably on my bed without the smell. Um, it was really, really bad. The, the scent was so strong on the walls because of the, the space that what you'll want to do is either <clears throat> when you first get it open up all the windows and vent out the entire house or if you don't have the stuff done and you do it yourself especially if you have animals make sure you open up all the window the windows to ventilate the house while the polyurethane or any kind of stain or paint is on the walls it's very important for the animals too and you because you're breathing in these chemicals and and they can give you headaches and cause a lot of internal damage so yeah the polyurethane smell is now out of my house thank goodness and um, I don't plan on doing too much nothing to the walls again or ever again um, when I'm caulking or sealing anything I also have to ventilate it even though it doesn't smell so that's just a heads up for the polyurethane on the walls or stains or paints if you choose to do it after the fact. And I want to mention one last thing when it comes to smells in a tiny house. Um, if any of you smoke, uh, whether that be cigarettes, cigars, marijuana, anything that, that smokes, it will go throughout the entire house. So think cigarette smoke, pot smoke, cigar smoke, incense smoke, sage smoke cooking smoke. All of these things are going to be accumulating in however many square feet house that you have. So again, windows definitely important to keep open. Um, you always want to make sure you have your fan on. The fan actually also ventilates quite well. Um, I find that the air is very stagnant when the, the fan is not running. So again, if you're a smoker of any kind or if you um, light incense or um, you sage your house to get the negative energies out, uh, you'll just want to make sure you ventilate it, have an air exchanger, have your air blowing, windows open, fans on, anything to make that scent go other places than the fire alarm and within your whole house. So yeah. Thank you.